Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this extraordinary session of the United Nations General Assembly. We have gathered together an expert panel encompassing several different points of view on the vexed subject of climate change. Doctor, if I might start with you, you're a leading climatologist and you represent the broad consensus of scientific community on this subject, I believe. Yes, that's right, Marcus. And to be honest, this whole summit is a waste of precious time, time which we don't have. All reputable scientists now agree that we are seeing climate change, that this climate change is largely man-made, caused by greenhouse gases, and that if we don't do something about it, and soon, the global temperatures will rise to produce devastating effects which we can only guess at. We do not need more research to establish these facts. We need to act, and to act now, to reduce carbon emissions before harmful changes become irreversible. Thank you for that succinct and slightly chilling summary, Doctor. If I could now turn to you, Senator, I believe you have a slightly different take on all this. Well, thank you, Mr Secretary, sir. That's right, I certainly do have a different take on all of this. In the first place, only 97% of all scientists worldwide agree that we're in a period of unprecedented global warming and that this is caused by the outputs of our industrial economies. The question I put to you is this. What if it turns out that the 3% are the ones who are correct all along? Are you seriously asking me to put all the economic gains of our society at risk for something that may not even come to pass? That's the first point. Here's another. What if this so-called global warming has some positive knock-on effects, like plants growing better? like the ice fields of Alaska melting so we can drill for even more oil more easily. And here's another. Who says that this so-called global warming is anything to do with mankind and our industrial civilization? There have, I understand, always been cycles in the Earth's climate. My company has invested billions, billions, in oil and gas exploration projects. Are you seriously asking me to throw all that up in the air on the basis of a mere possibility? I have tens of thousands of workers in our industry. What's going to happen to all their jobs if you just close everything down? You're talking megabucks here, chum. And that will put us at a grave disadvantage compared to our international competitors. OK, well now, Mr President, do you have a comment? Yes, I do. Global warming is not just a future threat. It's already happening, right now. My country, the Maldives, is built entirely on low-lying islands, nowhere more than two metres above sea level. We cannot live there anymore. As the sea levels rise, we must abandon more and more of our islands, and soon we will have nowhere to go. Mr Secretary, sir, it is not the Maldives who have caused this worldwide calamity. Why must it be the Maldives who have to pay for it? Well, that does seem a fair point, I must say. Reverend, I think you wanted to come in here? It is the judgment of God on this idolatrous people, these people from the Maldives. They have sinned before the Lord with their paganism, their Buddhism, and now... They have embraced the false god of Islam. Do you not know that all the earth will be judged, and judged in God's perfect timing? O oh, foolish man, do you think that a few policies here and a few policies there will make any difference to the Lord Almighty? He calls on all men to repent. Let me lead you all in prayer. OK, well, perhaps not just now. The gentleman over there with the headband and the feather, perhaps you have a different view on this. My sister, my mother, my dear friend, the earth is hurting. We are poisoning her. Where is the beauty, the grandeur, the terror, the awe? She weeps. Will we force her to cast us out, that she herself may survive? We have betrayed her. We have betrayed 
our own souls. Yes, we're certainly getting an interesting spread of views this morning. You, sir, right over there in the corner. I can't quite see who you are. What, me, Gov? You don't want to know what I think, Gov. Do you know, I've been in every single one of your posh meetings, but this is the first time anyone's asked me to speak. Ha! Well, let me tell you, Gov, I don't give a damn what you lot do, because it sure ain't going to make any difference to the likes of us. You carry on in your own sweet way, poisoning the earth and see if we care. You see, you're so sophisticated and complicated that you'll never be able to cope with the changes that are coming. Your civilization will collapse, and you lot will all go extinct, most likely. But that don't make no difference to us. We can cope with as many degrees centigrade as you want to throw at us. Thank you. Yes, I see. Well, that's one view, of course. May I ask who you are and who you represent? Me? I'm a cockroach. Ah, uh, 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 well, mo moving swiftly on. You over there in the other corner? Please. Please save us. You are our only hope. Please, hear our cries. Please don't leave us to our fate. I say, steady on. Who exactly are you? I am your children. And your children's children's children. And all future generations of mankind. I'm sorry, you don't have a voice at this table. 